Hello and welcome to A Crazy Thought of a Brit and a Texan. We're joined today by a special guest. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. My name's Andy. This is Michael Karp. He's going to be talking with me tonight because uh, Logan isn't feeling too great right now. Um, so we're going to move on. I just want to start off by saying uh, I hope everyone has a great Memorial Day. Um, let's remember... a all the ladies and gents that have lost their lives during countless wars that we've had. So it's a, it's a special weekend. It's very special to me. Um, and, you know, I really appreciate what everyone does for us. So, yeah. Uh, happy Memorial Day. Let's hope everything works out. So, Michael. I agree. Happy Memorial Day. And remember the sacrifices of those that came before us so that we could do what we're doing today. Yeah, freedom. America. Okay. <laughs> America. My, look, look, I got my America t-shirt on. But anyway, hey, moving on. I, I got a flag. It's right there. Yeah, we, we've got his American t-shirt, so I'm being very patriotic, even though I am a Brit. So, uh, let's move forward. Uh, so, how's your week been, Mike? My week has been... As you could say, quite the simulation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed like I blinked and it was gone. <laughs> hey, Lynn. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you. All right. So I want to get right into the subject. So I've never really been a big uh, fan of the movie uh, The Matrix. But I have recently been thinking to myself, what if we do live in a simulation? What if there really is those two pills that you can pick? And one that will bring you back to a reality that you might not want to see. Or one that will keep you in that reality that you, you know, you're already at. You've got a perfect job, whatever. You know, like the movie itself. I mean, you know, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this? I always thought there should have been a third pill. A third? Yeah. Why a third? What? Because maybe you're wanting out of the simulation because your job sucks and your life isn't where you want it to be. But you don't want to be in the real world. So there should be the third option of you get to go back and kind of twerk a few things. <laughs> I mean, so if you discover you're living in a simulation, though, Michael, couldn't, couldn't you actually make those changes without having to take a third pill? Well... That depends on how strong, I guess, with the technology you are of figuring out how to rewrite it. Right, because, you know, uh, it's kind of like a, if you discover you're in a, uh, the way I would liken it to, if you discover that you're living in a uh, simulation, um, you could definitely treat it like you was in a lucid dream, which means you can do like, uh, what's his name? The guy, that the main character? Neo. Like Neo, he can bend bullets and all sorts of crap, right? Yeah, he can stop bullets, fly. Although, so, I so, gotta admit, it was funny in the last movie, the fourth one, that he forgot how to fly and he couldn't, re he couldn't get flight back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I did watch those, but... So I've been doing a little bit of research, and, and forgive me, um, the the stories are, I don't remember where I got the stories from or whatever. There's one that sticks with me. So there was a, a, a lady and a gentleman that was involved in a, it should have been a fatal car accident. 100% should have been a fatal car accident. And uh, they've been happily married for like 10 or 15 years or something like that, right? And the lady would always drink her coffee without sugar and her husband would always drink the coffee with sugar and the lady would berate the husband for drinking coffee with sugar. So these guys are involved in an accident. The paramedics, the police, the EMTs, you know, the fire brigade, they all come out and basically look at the car and then look at the, the lady and the guy and go, how the hell have you walked out of this? Literally, they walked out of it, Michael. They got out of it without a scratch. So, 
to cut a long story short, things started to get a little bit strange between them. Uh, one of the things that he started to notice is the wife started to drink coffee with sugar, which she's never done before. That was the first like red flag, right? Right. So he kind of just ignored it and and asked her about it. And she said, oh, I've always drunk coffee with sugar, which he knows for a fact she hasn't. So the this is kind of like a glitch in the matrix. This is where I'm at. Right. So, like, he lets it go and, you know, keeps on living his life. Well, next thing he knows, he's working from home. And his wife's like, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy, but, for example, she's like, how's Richard doing? And he's like, who's Richard? And she is, she's like, you know Richard. And he's like, no, I've never met Richard. And he's, and she's like, no, you work with Richard. You've always worked with Richard. Just several different things that can't, you know. So the theory on that one is that they did not survive that crash. And it was a glitch in the matrix. So you basically, know, it reset them. Right. And what's interesting is I come from a metaphysics background. And we have a term in there. We call it walk-in. And so it's like the glitch, like you're saying, of, you know, she's now a different, acting different and everything. We would, instead of saying it's a glitch in the matrix, we would say, oh, she, her spirit passed on and another spirit walked in and took over. That's I'll why. That. And so I would say very much that's, you could call it a glitch because... It's, you know, co personality is altered. The, like you're saying, memories are altered. And, I mean, it's kind of, to me, a perfect way to explain, like, deja vu. I mean, how else yeah. can we have deja vu if we're not in a simulation of walking? Like, for example, I went to a friend's house when I was growing up for the very first time, walked into her kitchen and said, here, your forks are in this drawer. Open the drawer. There they were. And I was like, your cups are in this cupboard. Open it up. There they are. Never stepped wow. foot in this house. And I That's started telling time. her where everything was. And I was like, and I was like, I've been here, but I'd never been there. So to me, it was like deja vu. And so it's like, you're saying a glitch in the simulation of apparently my future self came back in the past and told right. me where everything was. And it like merged and glitched because it was too soon. Yeah. Deja vu. I mean, we've all suffered that. We've all been somewhere and gone. Pretty sure I've been here before, but you've never, you know, you've never been at that location or whatever. Right. Um, I, yeah, well, I view it differently because. What are the odds that you know where the glasses are, forks, you know, because not everybody keeps those in the same place. So to me, it was a little different deja vu of like walking outside and feeling like you've already done that kind of deja vu. Right. That That's why okay, I'm yeah. meaning it's more of a glitch because it's like I had information I couldn't have had. <laughs> right. No, I get what you're saying. That makes sense. So... I, I want to let you know, um, Elon Musk, very successful businessman, obviously, we all know him, Tesla and whatever else. He, he is actually one of those people that are leaning towards that we actually live in a simulation. You know, um, go ahead. I would say I would totally agree with that based on the fact of like we were discussing, it seemed like we just started the month of May and it's already June in a couple of days the week it's like time just seems to be zipping by at a faster rate so i would definitely say right. something is gotta be going on in like a simulation because our we if time was like they said constant we would never be feeling like the day was faster or slower the week passed faster or slower. 
Right. Everything would each day would feel the same amount of time, but yet we get like I could have sworn yesterday was say Tuesday and it's Sunday. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? Time is constant. So there's no I gotta be a simulation. No, I got what you're saying. Because you know, it felt like my childhood was my childhood was like the longest childhood. Because I remember I got to thirteen, I'm like, okay, sixteen is my next one. Then I got to sixteen, and it seemed like it took forever, right? And then right. I got to eighteen, and I was like, oh, twenty one's another good one. But when you reach eighteen, what I'm trying to tell the youngins, if there's any youngins watching us right now, don't wish your wife your life away because if you do, time just gets away from you. It's like you said earlier on, Michael, you just don't feel like you got enough time during the day to do everything you need to do. You know what I'm saying? I do. And, you know, I mean, we're simply talking about here like, you know, a week or a day or a month even. But, yeah, I mean, it's like we always heard our parents when we were growing up saying, oh, the golden age of this or that and wait till you're older, you'll understand this or that. And you always were like, yeah, that's just parent talk, you know, just whatever. But right. it's real to where there are days that I will wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I'm 44. And I feel like I was just in my 20s or 30s. Where did this go? <laughs> where did the years go? <laughs> and it's like, all of, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, and I can remember certain years, and there are certain years, like if you ask me what was I doing when I was 27, it's a blank. But if you ask me at 16, I could probably tell you a few things. It's but interesting you said that. But yeah, it's like, I mean, you know, why are certain years missing? <laughs> Uh, that's probably because we're too busy working our asses off. That's probably <laughs> what that is. To be that's honest probably with you. true. <laughs> um, so, you know, what leads me to believe that we may live in a simulator is um, some of the games we got out there, dude, like, you know, the civilization games. And you basically command the people like you got. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. You influence stuff that's around that game. And it brings, you know, so it makes me wonder if there is an eye of being or uh, an extraterrestrial out there that's got a computer simulation. Are we the simulation or is it a simulation of our simulation? It, it, it's mind bending. I mean, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And what's interesting is we're taught not to think like that because we're told that we could. If we start going down that rabbit hole, lose our sanity or become delusional. And it's like, why why are we taught now to think is a bad thing? It's I've never like, been told that. I've always been told told to think. <laughs> well Cause it's uh, much, that's because it's so much stupid crap that I've done in my past though. <laughs> well, but I I'm meaning I'm not meaning like don't think i'm like i'm meaning like there are certain things like you were saying you know are we a simulation of a simulation of a simulation and i was always told growing up by people you got to watch how you think like that because your mind could end up you know you can get lost and going oh my gosh how far but you know who's the creator of the simulation because is there a creator of the simulation? Or is I the mean, simulation you, creating the simulation that's creating the simulation? That see that's the that's the thing that by, kind of my you know, bends your mind. I don't you don't have an Xbox, right? I'm assuming. Um Are I a new do. Xbox? I okay. had, the last one I got was the three sixty. Okay, well I've got the, the new Series X and uh, I forgot which game company bought it at, but they bought out a, a game specifically just to show you what the future graphics could look like. 
and it was based on the movie The Matrix. Wow. Now the graphics on the graphics on this thing, Michael, are so realistic. It's crazy. You know, it, it's absolutely crazy. And I was watching another thing where they think in a, eventually you're not going to be able to tell. Let's say we're not in a simulation, right? But eventually with the, the way the games are going and stuff, with the VR headsets and all that good stuff, right? who's to say that eventually you won't be able to tell reality from simulation when you start playing them typed games? There's a, there's a thing on Amazon, uh, a TV program that, that Amazon uh, does, and I can't for the life of me remember it. But basically what it is, if you're about to die, right? Right. This oh, big... Upload. Upload. There we go. So Upload. That's one of my favorite series, by the way. I watched I watched both series already. Um, uh, I'm a little behind on season two. I've already watched it. I already got through it. Um, so Upload is a perfect example of the what would what we're actually talking about because these people know they're in a simulation, right? But right. life is so realistic to them. They can feel everything. They still eat. They still drink. They still interact like a normal, Go for walks normal person. And... But it's a simulation. So it's a perfect example of what we're talking about. How do we know that we're not in a simulation? Yeah. How do we know that? How do we know that we're not actually in the bloody matrix? And there are aliens that have took over the earth and we're sat in a pod somewhere you know that's a good question because well actually wow that's such a good question i can't answer how we would definitely know we're not in the simulation i got i got a although thing for you as well, i would say if i was to put myself into a simulation for my future I sure as hell would not pick right now as my this is where I want to be <laughs> simulation. <laughs> I'm like, God, there are times I could have picked that were better than this and been like, yeah, let's just go back to this point or let's Wait, go the, beyond the, where the, this. <laughs> the point is, though, you don't get to pick. You don't oh, get yeah, to pick true. What, time, what time you come into. But I have another mind-bending one for you, Michael. Maybe you can answer this one. What if the Matrix movie is a documentary? I would say there there could be some truth to that because there, I view the movies as kind of like metaphors of what we're going through. And it does seem like there are people or a group that is pulling the strings so to speak, and deciding what we are and aren't going to do. So that, and by definition, is a simulation. It's just we're not computer graphics. We're, quote, flesh and blood, if well, you, we really you said are. That, but, you said <laughs> that, but I do you know, I do know <clears throat> that we, we aren't computer graphics. So, you know, and... I know we did. Yeah, I'm sorry to bend your mind a little bit, Anna. Yeah, and I'm trying not to use the movie as a reference because we said we didn't want to make it all about the movies. No, I know, I know, but, and I completely agree with you. But what I'm saying is, though, to, but, to yeah. respond to what you said, we're not graphics, but how do you know that we're not graphics? That's, that's my question. See, and I was going to answer that's not... it with a quote from the movie. If you remember the first movie, when. The guy that creates all the programs that they're going to use that Tank puts in the mind through the probe. And they were sitting there eating that slop. And he goes, and he looks at him and he goes, you know, how do we know, like, chicken tasted like chicken? How do we know it wasn't supposed to be this? And maybe right. that's why everything tastes like chicken. Because they didn't know what it was supposed to taste like. <laughs> and it's right. like, it's a, you know, it's like a joke, but at the same time, it's like, you know, that makes so much sense because 
yeah how do we know the sky really is blue who determined the color we see during the day is blue and everybody said yeah they're right right and so yeah we are i think driven by a lot of constructs that we just simply take on face value and don't even really know really where they originated from like grass you know who determined grass was green it could be you know what we see as green could be orange (laughs) well i'm colorblind so it looks totally different i'm seeing that's a and that's part of the simulation too is you know what i have a fault all these differences If everybody has created it, as they say, in the image of (coughs) one person, then why do some people need glasses? Some people need a cane. Some people need a chair to get around. Some people, you know, and to me, those are the anomalies. Hmm? You ever play Grand Theft Auto? I have not. There's so many different, like, you know, uh, computer-controlled people that have different, like, characteristics and stuff like that. What you just described is Grand Theft Auto, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, and that's not a simulation. That's a game where you run around and you go kill people and crap like that. And you take the cars, that's why it's called Grand Theft Auto, and you do different missions. But isn't that but if you look at, what we're living in right now? <laughs> kind of, a little bit. That's sad to say, but um, yes. So, uh, yeah, so that game could be just a biography of what we're living through of the right. simulation. I want to tell you about another story that, that I watched on YouTube. And again, I, I totally forgot the, uh, the author. But, uh, before you go the there, video. I wanted to explain what I was talking about with okay. the glasses and chairs is... If it was a computer simulation, I personally feel like whoever creates the simulation would not have so many oddities and differences that, you know, would cause people rifts, like, you know, to think, you know, why is this person different? And so... To me, it's like that's maybe where I draw the line of maybe we aren't in a simulation as much as we think we are. Because if you're a programmer of a simulation, you don't want to be sitting there having to deal with fixing a lot of bugs and kinks and all this from people starting to do this or that. The free will but they're not kind fixing of aspect. It, but they're not fixing it, though. True. But so why do they have to worry about that? I think because I'm I'm trying to think of the free will part of it to where we, we do have free will. Well, but here's the thing if we're in a simulation, what is free will? Because by definition of being in a simulation, whatever I'm thinking and about to say somebody typed in and programmed for me to think and say therefore there is no free will you could almost argue well i don't know because if you look at ant colonies the people that collect ant colonies they set them up in a jar right and then it's up to the ant colony where they want it they're they're in a simulation in theory and it's up to them which direction they go in so why isn't that the same thing for us well, I would argue then it's a simulation within a simulation within a simulation. Because like you said, the ants are running their own simulation. We're running a right. simulation watching them do their simulation. So to us, yes, they have free will because they look like they're doing whatever they want. But to them, they're uh, they're playing out the simulation they were programmed to play out. But they're not programmed, though, Michael. That's the that's the thing. They they uh, just plopped in. They're plopped in this device, and it's like good do ant stuff. 
And they're like, okay. Yeah, but who they determined who... what's ant stuff? The ants. So then if the ant if ants can determine what they're going to do, then the same should be said for us. And that's what we do on a daily basis, though. Yeah, and they, so... set, they, set, they set the program, Michael, and then it's up to us what we do. I mean, uh, so it's like, you know, I don't know. Uh, the simulators out there where you just basically hit some buttons and then it's up to the people to do whatever they're going to do. Right. And, and you don't think that is more feasible. Because I'm not saying someone controls my life directory, di directly. I would say we probably started out in a simulation. But I think we broke out of it because if you look at, you know, going back to Stone Age, you know, man's walking around, living in a cave killing whatever it can and eating. And then somebody all of a sudden said, hey, we can have fire. And evolution, so to speak, took a shift. And we started being able to travel further out and started being able to do other stuff. So to me, those moments, I think, are kind of like, I would say, to make a simplified definition the neo moments of the matrix where he awakened made his choice evolved and then it started over like right. the architect said you know this is our so maybe hundredth you know version of this program and the job of the one is to reset it for the next group right and then it emerges and resets and so that could be explained how we went from stone age to bronze age to iron age through the renaissance dark ages is there was the one which could be a collective group that went and broke the programming shifted us to a new program and that became our norm and so i would say then it's we have to then start wondering who are we trusting to make these leaps for us because i can tell you right now whoever made the leap to where we are now i would like to go up to that person and say please explain to me the logic of where you thought this was an evolutionary bonus to go here and put us in this situation versus where we were. <laughs> I don't think there's any going back, though. No, it's like they say you can't. It's like I always say you can't take a person that comes from the past into the future and send them back to the past because they can't unlearn what they've already seen and experienced. Right. But you know, the past is the past, though, and people need to move on. I agree with that to a certain extent, as and long we, as we, we, learn... we learn. We learn from the mistakes of history, Michael. Right. That's, that's where I think we need to be clear is we're not saying forget everything of the past. Mm -hmm. You got to remember <laughs> what the good and the bad and what caused the bad so that you don't repeat it. Right, and and, that, and that's why that's why there's museums all over the place that relate to the Holocaust and and all that good stuff. There's one in Dallas, yeah, and, the Holocaust and the uh, the humanitarian museum. And there's you know statues, you know, of all of our you know quote dark moments in mm -hmm. our country's history. We can't erase them because right. then we're just inviting it to come back in again. Yeah, people which, don't which, seem uh, to understand. It's not a reminder of the horror; it's a reminder to not, not do it again. Go there, and become that horror again. Yeah. 
So I, I want to tell you about this story because it seems like we went off subject just a little bit towards end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to go and tell trigger warning for especially for Amanda. There's a trigger warning because it involves a little puppy dog, and we love puppy dogs. So uh, if you're going to tell a, me a story where a puppy gets hurt, I don't want to hear it. It's not necessarily <laughs> hurt. It, it it has a happy ending at the end. It's more strange than anything. Okay, so right. here we go. Trigger warning, uh, puppy dog. Kind of gets hurt, but it's it's a happy ending. So just, just bear with me, Michael. And Amanda. I'm sure Amanda's watching too. So, this, this guy had a dog. And the dog starts choking on a tree. So the guy saves the dog does what he needs to do to save the dog, right? Right. The dog goes in the other room, lays on his pet bed, on the dog bed, and the guy goes back to watching TV. Well, a few minutes later, this guy is like this awful, like, choking and noises and whimpering and all this stuff, right? And then the guy gets out of his chair, goes into the other room where the dog bed is, the dog's disappeared. This is another glitch in the Matrix, by the way. So this guy is searching around the house for hours. Goes outside, looks around the general vicinity for his dog, right? That's just seemingly disappeared. Thin air. Like, no trace of the dog whatsoever. And he's about to come to his wit's end when all of a sudden the door opens and his parents have got that same dog. And he asks his parents, how long have you had the dog? And the parents said to him, we've had him for about 30 minutes and took him for a walk. How do you explain that? The guy was well, looking for hours for that dog. That I could say is, the one question is, do the parents have a key to the house? In which case, they could have came in and got the dog and just didn't want to disturb him. You know, on right. routine, and he just felt like it was hours when it was really just a half hour. Because, I mean, how many times have we experienced that where when we get panicked, we think, oh my God, you know, so much time has passed. And you look at your watch, it's like, not really. Not much yeah, time. But here's the thing, though. But that guy knew specifically where the dog went. And the guy went into that room. How does a dog just disappear? From a room. And That's then, what I mean is if yeah. the parents had a key, they could have went in and got the dog, gone on their normal walk, but I would think they would tell him we're taking the dog. I mean, so, that's the thing. And, you know, there are other times, other things in there that, yeah, you know, I've had moments to where I swear my dog is in another room and I look down and he's right next to me. And I'm like, when did you get here? It's like, I never heard him come in, <laughs> never heard him jump to where I was and they got little tags. So it's like, I should have heard it. But my, my thing is, dude, that to me is definitely a glitch in the matrix. Yeah. That's, now, that's what that seems to be like. Yeah. I, I I don't know if you've seen these videos online. Now, this has been an aviation enthusiast, especially like World War II birds. I can kind of dispel some of the stuff that I've seen online. But some of it is very intriguing. There are videos that are out there um, of people filming aircraft that should be moving that physically look like they're stood still. Now, for me personally... Yeah. That can be explained away, especially if you're moving towards the aircraft. It just it's an optical illusion. Because if you look at an airplane in a distance, that plane looks like it should be falling out of the sky. It doesn't look like it's barely moving. But in theory, right. it's traveling 250, 280 miles an hour while it's climbing. Now so some of that can be explained away, but there are other videos that are out there that you can't quite explain, like a pigeon. I saw this video myself. A pigeon is just sat there, not moving. The wings aren't flapping. There is no movement in this pigeon. And it's just basically sat there. Now, whether someone CGI'd that, 
I don't know. But you'd have to be a great CGI person to do something yeah. like that. Now, that opened the door to two things that I think are really going to blow your mind about being in the Matrix. But, well, one of them. The other one was when you said, you know, you see a plane looking standing still when you're walking towards it. How do mm -hmm. you explain standing in a parking lot, looking up in the distance, seeing a black outline of a plane that never moves for like 15 minutes? You can't explain that. That happened Unless to me. It, <laughs> it depends on... It depends on the type of the aircraft, though. Uh, if it's got VTOL technology, if it's I a passenger took... plane, if it's yeah. a passenger plane, I can't explain it. If it's a military plane, I could sit there and argue it may have been an Aria jump jet or the new F thirty-five because they cannot hover in place. Yeah. So well, it depends on the. Type it was of too the far to see. It it was in a horizon. It was too far to see, but and there was no sound of the airplane. And you don't think it was an helicopter? No, because there was absolutely no sound. Of course, you know it could have been drowned out by the We're highway. We're having some issues with your connection right now, Michael. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> you're you're starting to look frozen on one my minute. screen. <laughs> Kayla Sparks, All right. I agree. All right. dogs are magic. Issues, bear with us. We're going to see if we can get Michael back. Uh, I'm... Hold on, your screen's buffering. Oh. So, as we wait for Andrew to come back. What shall we talk about? Um, let's see. In the chat room, dogs, yes, dogs are magic. They are great. They can pick up when we're feeling low and help lift our spirits. That's one of the reasons why I love having dogs around. They're the perfect companion. Uh, let's see. Amanda, it probably is a good idea to watch all four together. You can watch the Animatrix if you want by choice. Uh, let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Hello. I'm back. There he is. <laughs> I'm slight technical issues there. I'm sorry. That's on my okay. end. Okay, That's the simulation not wanting us to talk about the simulation. Tell me about it, dude. Our Wi-Fi <laughs> sucks sometimes. I think that's all it is. That's our simulation. <laughs> Bloody AT&T, you pay all that money and they still can't get the connection good. <laughs> Just recently, it's been a nightmare. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the aircraft. I'm intrigued. What sort of aircraft was it? I don't know, because it was off in the horizon, and it was too far to see. It was just, like, probably this big in the sky to my view. I took pictures. I'd have to dig okay. them up. But yeah, definitely, and, and send them to me, and I'll put them on the Facebook post, see what people say. And, I mean, to me, I was taking – it was while I was working as a fundraiser, so I was breaking down a table – and I was looked. I looked up because something said "look up," and there it was. And for the as long as I looked at it, and as long as I checked out from the location I was at and gathered all my stuff up to put away, it was still in the same spot. Oh wow! And 
there was you know there was a highway nearby that was kind of busy but i could hear nothing from the sky was it getting bigger or smaller it was staying exactly the same it was like it was literally okay. frozen right there wow but uh, uh i can't i can't explain that one michael you kind of screwing with me on that one <laughs> yeah see if you can dig the pictures up dude and, and send them to me and i'll post them on facebook for yeah. sure and uh the one thing i was gonna say that'll probably blow your mind about being in the simulator the mandala effect that's definitely one i want to cover uh, i yeah. covered it on my previous podcast um yeah um not sure that's the thing I want to do tonight, though. Yeah, but I am aware one, of the Mandela effect. Yeah, the one that always makes me laugh is you. Rem- I don't know if you watched us in the UK. We had a group of like Bugs Bunny, and it was the Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Well, it was originally called Looney Tunes. T U N E S. And they were saying that was a mandala effect because it was never called that. And I've got to. I'm on I've that been side watching. of the fence, bro. I'm on that side of the fence. But here's the thing: I've been watching. I admit, I'm 44 and watching cartoons on I'm Saturday not morning. I'm 39. Me TV, and I record the Bugs Bunny and Daffy show, and they have clips right. where it literally says Looney Tunes. T U N E S. It was like the very right. first, and then they goes to Looney Tunes T O O N S. So it's like I don't know if it's still right. I, I don't know how much of a mandala effect that is, but it's like it really made me think. And there are so many times where I'll have memories of doing something, but. It, Everybody else is like, no, dude, that never happened. Right. I'm like, what and, do you, you mean know, it never happened? I know it happened. No. Nope. <laughs> right. I can I can tell you without a doubt, when I was younger, and we did have that show in England, uh, it was definitely T-O-O-N-S, not T-U-N-E-S. That makes no freaking sense. And I think the ones that are T-U-N-E-S – are the ones that are like black and white and the very, very original? Mm-hmm. I uh, I don't think so. I always remember it, Looney Tunes. T-O-O-N-S. Because it's basically a cartoon. There is no two. Anyway, yeah. that's going down a rabbit hole that I don't want to go down tonight. Well, so, there was music to some of them. So that's where I think the T-U-N-E-S came in. But yeah, that aside. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh Let's agree to disagree on that one because I'm totally on the <laughs> tune side. Um, so, um, I mean, do we live in a bloody simulator? That's a good question. If you have any, uh, if you want to message us uh, or send any comments, let us know. I mean, I think I think it's very feasible. If you got one of the, you know, one of the the guys that are a multi billionaire thinking it. And he, you know, he's pretty intelligent, to be honest with you. Yeah. It makes me, it makes me believe we can. I think we could be living in a simulator, because you look at some of these games like Grand Theft Auto and and different things like that. They're so realistic. I mean, you can walk up to a person and accidentally walk. I just I sent you it. images. Okay, I know that location as well. I believe. Okay, so I mean. I will see if I can get that up at some point. Um, so I think I think we do. What's your thoughts on it? I mean, it, it's either we do or we don't. I would say if we're going to go to that dynamic of certainty, I would say we do. Because right. there's too many things going on that are like simulation that makes you think, yeah, we are in the simulation to say no we can't be in one right but then again you know that could be the biggest like wool over the eyes of making us think we're in a simulation when we're not (laughs) 
<laughs> and right. that could be the grand experiment is, you know, what will people do if they think they're in a simulator, even though they're not? <laughs> it, could, it could bring turmoil, couldn't it? That's it a rabbit hole bring. I don't want to go to. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we can wrap it up on that one. I, I, I believe that I think there's too much evidence out there that could show that we are living in in a simulator. Yeah. I mean, another factor is like, you know, how, if I cut my finger, can it heal up in a matter of minutes to where if you cut your finger the same way, it takes hours or, you know, longer. What, how, you know, who determines what you know everyone's healing factor is right i got you okay cool so i think yep i think we can wrap it up and and i think we're both in agreement. it definitely is it could definitely well be a simulation yeah uh i sure as hell wouldn't pick it (laughs) (laughs) so i want i want to talk to you we were talking earlier on and and you mentioned that you'd had some experiences with some UFOs, which I, I've got to say, I, I personally, I'm out there to try and see if there's spirits. That's that's my goal. I haven't really delved deep into uh, the UFO side, UFO side of things. I mean, I like to talk about aliens. Like, I don't. You was there last week when me and Logan was talking about if aliens exist or not. Right. So I guess this is like a, a little add-on to that from last week. Well, and to touch on, you know, just to piggy into back a little on that one, if you remember the movie Contact with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey, where they are talking about, you know, could aliens exist? I like mm-hmm. the line where they go, it would be a very big waste of space if we were the only ones out here in the universe. Why do we need all those other planets and stars and everything out there and all the other galaxies in the world that are no, out I there? Think, you know, you know and, and I'm going back to last week's podcast, which we won't do for too much longer, but it's like I said to Logan, if if we truly think we're the only species in this all universe, we're very arrogant. Yeah. Very arrogant as a species, which I mean, technically we are, to be honest with you. We think we're above everything, well, but we're not really. Yeah. Just to be honest. Yeah. So I want to talk about your UFO experiences. So one experience I had oh, over to you, Michael was I was driving home at night and It was kind of like one of those where it was a pitch black sky. No, you can't see clouds, but you don't see stars either. And so it's kind of like you're going, you know, what is going on up there? Mm -hmm. And something told me to stop my car. And so I pulled over (coughs) off the road because, you know, I'm not stupid. I'm not stopping (laughs) in the middle of the road and risk getting hit to see what's going on. So, and I get out of my car, and something says, look up. And all of a sudden, I see this light way up in the sky. It couldn't be like a tree. It couldn't be a street light. And it's sitting there. And then all of a sudden, it just zipped away at like an angle and i was like in my mind like going wow i just saw a ufo because one i couldn't identify what it was and two it was flying and three it was definitely an object (laughs) so i was like by definition i just saw a ufo it it was like That's one of those crazy. rare moments to where it's like you're sitting there going yeah, you're like because of that. Because I, I didn't get any photos because this was 
boy, uh, probably in my twenties. Michael, before... you're about to lose me again, dude. We're about to. Uh... Michael, you're about to lose me again, buddy. All right. I'm having Wi-Fi connection issues, so you're gonna have to carry on talking amongst yourself. All right. I've got this little warning popping up again. This fuck. This Wi-Fi is doing my head in. We might so, be all right. We'll see. Right now, I've, I've still got you, kinda. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was like giddy because I'm sitting here going, "Wow, I just seen something unidentified flying in the sky." How cool is that? And I didn't feel threatened by it. And I have been to where I can see in the sky when it's clear. I can see the satellites moving. So I knew it wasn't one of those. And right then time went by and I'm kind of like, eh, you know, it was a one time thing, whatever. And I would be driving and something would say, you know, hey, you don't have to. It's like my mind would say, you don't have to stop the car, but, you know, kind of look out the window. And Mm -hmm. I'd look out the window and there was a light that seemed to be keeping up with my car. And I'm like, in my my first thought was, I'd say probably... Above the tree line, like probably right at tree line. And so my first thought was, well, maybe somebody decided to put a bunch of lights, you know, and or in the to light up like a street or something or a path. And so by the speed, it looks like it's a solid, you know, light moving. But then there were no trees and the light was still there. And then when I got to another bunch of trees, they were a little taller, and I lost sight of it for a second. And then when I got to a clearing, it was like it was there, and then it was gone. And so right. I was like, if I was seeing like light, maybe the car was moving fast enough that it was, you know, maybe a path lit up. Some For some reason, somebody lit it up that way. I don't know. But to me, it was like, it just was strange place to put a bunch of lights. Right. But, yeah, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry, there I'm was having, no shape I'm really to it. I'm connection issues right now. It's pissing me off. I don't yeah. understand what's going on. So you're, you're breaking up while you're talking to us. It's not going well right now. I'll be honest with you. It really isn't. But we'll we'll try and soldier on. Well, um, am I coming in clear now? Yeah, it's not your end. It's my end for some reason. And and you know what's funny is Logan's got the same laptop as me. And it's only just this last week we started getting connection issues, and I don't understand why. Uh, I, well, I Amanda I'm, says I'm everything to... seems fine. Yeah, well, not, not on this side, it don't. But we'll carry on. Um, so UFOs, I've not necessarily had any um, any experiences with UFOs, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things that I thought might have been a UFO, I've been able to debunk. It's either a plane or an helicopter or something like that. Well, and, this, uh, this next one, I I can't explain it. And I had my mom come out and see it, and she was, like, in awe. Right. It it was a cloudy day. No, it wasn't a, you know, there was no storms, just cloudy. And it was nighttime. And we looked up, and it was, like, there was this one large cloud, maybe the size of... This, you know, like a laptop screen, and you know, just imagine in the sky, really large. But it was like, right. I'm, what I'm meaning is a solid cloud, not like a bunch of clouds just around. It was one cloud, and above the cloud, you would see like yellow burst over here, and then another okay. burst over here, and then there'd be red over here, and red over here, and it was like. 
you could almost time it to where it'd be like if I thought of it as like my mind first went to space battle. If you're picturing a ship firing on a ship and hitting the shields or, the, you know, an impact of shields or the craft, it was like you were seeing that. Like they were just like little bursts and they were like a bunch random. And it'd always be one color. The colors didn't usually mix. And so my first thought and instinct was to get my mom and say, hey, do you want to see a space battle? And she's like, what? And she came out and she's looking at it going, yeah, I have never seen a lightning storm like this because there's no bolts of lightning. It's just the color flares up. So I don't know if you can explain that. Uh, so I'm looking. I don't know if you noticed. I just started a, a tab up to where I can share the screen. Right. And I googled cloud lightning. And uh, let me just show you what it came up with. Oh, hold on a minute. It's cloud lightning any good? Hmm. Yeah, no, that's not good. Hold on. I'm I'm looking it came up with a we a weapon. A weapon? Yeah. I don't know why it came up with I've never even heard of a cloud lightning. Bear with me one second, Michael. Keep talking, dude. Well, I'm, I'm looking. Well, if you think about it, cloud lightning as a weapon, that could go along with the battle, like how it looked like a battle. I mean, so, uh, oh, bugger. Hold on. And it was only in one spot in the sky. The rest of the sky was totally fine. It was just this one cloud. So I've got an image that I'm going to open up for you. All right. I'm going to try and open it up for you. Give me one second. Oh, bugger. We did it this earlier. Button. I know we did. <laughs> I know. Tell me about that. Give me one second. Maybe I need to um, start doubting you again because you always seem to pull it off <laughs> and say, don't <laughs> doubt me. <laughs> I have no idea what I did on the last one, but I made it work. And now it just wants to open in a different link. I have a perfect picture give me a second though because i can show you the image and but last time i was able to show you a bigger version but i've got something that might look like like what you're looking at you know what i'm saying yeah oh i don't know what's going on off here yeah <laughs> if you think it looks like this there we go uh okay michael uh i can see the Does images kind of look like that? no they weren't streaks it was like it would be like a ball just it would be like, imagine a paintball, and when it exploded on impact, uh, it would be like you would see that flash of color. Wi-Fi is what it is. Again. Oh. Amanda thinks I might have seen ball lightning. Ball lightning. Am I back, by the way? Did you hear any of that audio? No, I didn't. Okay. Thanks, God, for that. Ball lightning. Uh, internet's acting up again. I'm going to get this looked See, at for next week because this is embarrassing. The problem with the ball lightning, I'm looking at pictures on my end. Is you see lightning? Well, I've bolts. got them up here right now. If you want to take a look, yeah. See, and when you look at the light, the lightning streaks, I didn't see any of that. It was like literally, it would be like, well, all right. 
Like, okay, hold it right there. The, oh, hold on. Your screen's rotating. Uh, okay, so that image second to the right that looks like, you know, a circle in the... This one? No, yeah. no, no. Down one row and over to the right. Keep going. That one. It would be like that, like seeing that like kind of shape but the color changes and it would be like a brief second so it wouldn't Why not? kind of like that but not to that degree well maybe it was but the eye couldn't see that from where we were on the street but it would be like the best way to describe it is like when the paintball explodes open and, you know, you get color kind of burst right. out. It would be like a really small version of that. That's what that looks like, though, Michael. What you're explaining is what that yeah. image looks like. But it would, the colors would change and they would be in different places and just over one cloud. So that was the other thing that got my attention is why is it only over one cloud and not the other clouds in the sky? Well, it looks something like, I mean, that, that's ball lightning. So if, if you're looking at this image with me right now, it's got yeah. different, Is I'm colorblind, but isn't that different colors? A little bit, yeah. But, I mean, these were drastic chain, and they would, I mean, it literally was, if you were to take, all right, so let me put it this way. When we see, you've seen sci-fi movies where planes are in the air and like they shoot something and it lights up the shields. Right. Imagine that happening with that little ball as being where they would impact and just be like, Five or six on one side, and then, and at the same time, three or four maybe on the other side, a little bit off. But all the clouds around them, perfectly nothing. White as can be, normal cloud. So that's what I'm trying to say is, if it is ball lightning, why is it only one cloud in the sky? I see what you're saying. Bear with me a sec, because there is a, a... I don't know if I can get the video up. Uh, keep talking, Michael. I'm listening. I'm, I'm going to try and pull a video up. I mean, it, it kind of was like... I was thinking about the... Um, and, you know, after it, it happened and time went by, I started learning about, like, the Battle of Los Angeles, where there was something in the sky, and... The radar picked it up in World War II. I don't know if you're familiar with that. And they couldn't identify what it was, and they tried shooting it. And Like the blimp? They got, yeah. They said it was a blimp? Yeah. Yeah. Although, I don't know how they missed the blimp. And, you know, that story makes us look like, really, how did we win World War II if that was the pinnacle of our defenses <laughs> it's like sometimes they're trying to explain it away it makes it sound a whole lot worse <laughs> so yeah i mean and of course you know i didn't film any of this i wish i had because you know that would be really cool to watch but i mean I think that's the thing about UFOs and why so many people see things and some people don't is it's a matter of are you open to an idea and perception or are you closed off to it? I had a lady that was like uh, we call a guide, you know, someone who mentored and everything you know and it was like a voice of wisdom and she would say you know if you take 
someone will use you as an example that doesn't believe UFOs, we'll say, and one mm-hmm. parks out right outside your house, you're not going to see it because you don't believe it. Whereas I, if I was to walk out of your house, go, dude, look at that UFO right there. You'd be like, where? I don't see it. Because your mind will not accept what you cannot believe. Well, so I, have a, the I have a perception very field. Yeah, but she told us, like, your mind's perception is and point of view is built on your beliefs. So if you believe a UFO is impossible, you'll never see it. Whereas the person that, you know, may say, hey, you know, I don't believe they're real, but I don't believe they're not real. They may see it because their mind will be like, hey, there's something there. I I don't know what it is, but there is something. (laughs) And that's the beauty of, you know, human beings is we all call it the human experience. Everything we're doing is based on our filters, and so we see everything differently. Okay, yeah. Hey, Michael, I'm having some real issues with this internet right now, dude. I, I appreciate the stories you told us. Yeah. But I think we're going to call it a night, and I'm going to have to figure something out with this Wi Fi for Tuesday for sure. Because, you know, I've got shuffling. Is that how I pronounce it? George and Carla Shoplin. Yeah. Yeah, it's Shoplin. The last name. It is Shoplin. I pronounced it right. It is Shoplin. I've got them joining us on, uh, joining me on Tuesday night. And we're going to be talking, you know, about paranormal stuff. Um, yeah. If you want to uh, give us a like and a follow, I apologize that we're going to have to cut the short, dude. But I, ca- I can't be. Like every two minutes, I'm getting you're chopping up. I don't even know if I could put this on. On uh, I see what it looks like. I'll, I'll watch it over. Well, but Amanda's we, we been are, watching it, and she says we're both coming in clear. Yeah, it's it's and weird. I so... cut off at that one <laughs> point. It, it's it's very weird. I keep getting a, a little warning in on the top left hand corner of my thing. You start chopping up, and I start losing your audio. So it's my end. I So I'm assuming that on my end, some of this is going wrong. But I just want to mention before we leave, you can watch us on uh, Spotify, believe it or not. Uh, we're on Apple, and we're also on uh, Amazon. Um, start watching us, give us a shout out and all that good stuff. Uh, Michael, we really appreciate you taking your time tonight to help us out. Yeah. Um, Always a pleasure. We're going to have to... We're going to have to figure something else out at some point. Uh, maybe we can get on uh, at some point and talk about the uh, Mandela effect. But, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna call it a night for the night, and I'm going to go figure something out with this internet and get it fixed. All right. All right. We really appreciate you watching, and you have a good night. Thank you, Michael. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Good night.